stoichiometry of reacting gases. What do we, well, what are we going to do with this? We might have a few possibilities. We want, want to know what the volume of carbon dioxide is when I've burnt something, or the volume of oxygen, again, a volume of a gas needed to react with hemoglobin in the red blood cells. Okay. Well, as soon as they are talking about that sort of thing, we're going to be using stoichiometry again. And then after we have the number of moles, we'll convert them into volume because now we can do that. We've got PV equals NRT. That'll help us out every time. Needless to say, here's a nice little puzzle. Oh, without a calculator, which would produce more hydrogen gas. Well, let's examine this closely to see what we've got for a formula. Well, there's the hydrogen gas, okay? And they're giving me some molar masses. It says grams per mole for each of these. Okay, so that must have something to do with what's going on. Now, what are they offering me? I need to look at this and say, well, they're offering me 10 grams of sodium, that's here, or 10 grams of sulfuric acid, that's there or a mole of sodium or a mole of the sulfuric acid. All right, all right. So the first thing I need to do, well, they've given me four possibilities. I should try to compare apples to apples. So I'm going to be looking at the sodium first, which is more, 10 grams of sodium or a mole of sodium. Okay. This should remind me to go look at some stuff because I have a nice little graphic that I like to use for this sort of thing, right? The balanced chemical equation is where you do your mole-to-mole -mole conversions, right? And that's sort of a hub, so I put two circles around it just to remind me that it lets me do more than one thing. Now, it could be used, along with Avogadro's number, to figure out the number of particles, right? If I know a number of moles, use Avogadro's number, I can figure out a number of particles, or if I have particles, I can go to moles. And then I use the balanced chemical equation to change from mole to mole. There's also the molar mass, which we do see in this problem. The molar mass lets me change to an observable macroscopic thing, which is grams. I can observe grams. And we have now added something new to this. It's PV equals NRT, because see, it has moles right in the formula. The N is moles. So given the number of moles from this, if I have a temperature and a pressure, I'll be able to figure out the volume, which is also observable in liters. Okay, so we're back to something macroscopic. So this is what I'm being asked to deal with, as well as this side. Because in one case, they told me about the moles and I only have to do this. In the other case, they told me about grams, which means I need to think about moles first before I try to come up with this. All right, so you know, we're going to try to do this in a logical fashion, so we'll talk about sodium first. 10 grams of sodium compared to one mole of sodium. Well, I find that 23 grams per mole is the molar mass, so a mole of sodium would have a larger mass than 10 grams would. So A, I have eliminated. Let's do the same thing with the sulfuric acid. They're offering me 10 grams of sulfuric acid or a mole of sulfuric acid. Oh, well, a mole would be 98 grams, which is clearly more than 10 grams. So B is out. Only C and D are still left as a possibility in this problem. Ow. They asked, which would produce more hydrogen gas? I'm going to look at mole versus mole. If I have one mole of this, it's offering one mole would give me two moles of gas. If I have one mole of this, well, it takes two moles here. So the sodium is going to produce less because I haven't met the requirement of being two. This one gave me a mole, which is what was here. This is only giving me half as much. So D ends up being the answer. So you should think about that carefully because it is the stoichiometry of it that makes the difference here. I only need one mole. I need two moles. 
this has the one mole. This is not giving me a full two moles, so this would give me more. Another example, and this one's going to be a little more sophisticated. Read that as difficult, right? So carbon dioxide generated in a submarine or a spacecraft. You've got to get oxygen back out of it. All right. There's potassium superoxide, which incidentally is one of the cases where oxygen does not get to be a minus two for its charge. That's an odd one. Okay, it will react with carbon dioxide and release oxygen. All right. And here is the balanced equation for that. So that's great that we've got a balanced chemical equation to start with. It wants us to calculate the mass needed to react with 50 liters of carbon dioxide that is at 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere pressure. I need to know the number of moles then, right? Because coefficients are always dealing with moles. So I need to change 50 liters of carbon dioxide into moles. Well, I can do that with my friend, the uh, PV equals NRT. Well, the first thing we're going to do is realize that they gave us 25 degrees Celsius. So for temperature, I cannot use it the way it is. I have to add the 273 and get it into Kelvin. So I've got 298 Kelvin. All right, check. They told me the pressure is one atmosphere. Excellent. That one's okay the way it is. I know which R that I am going to use. It has to be the one with the liters and atmospheres in it. So it's 0 0.08206 liter atmosphere mole Kelvin. Check. And they gave me the volume. The volume is 50 with a point there. So I have two sig figs liters. Okay. The only thing missing from PV equals NRT is N. I'll take PV equals NRT. And I will rearrange it so that N equals PV over RT. And then I'll put in all my numbers. So the one atmosphere, the 50 liters, 0 0.08206 liter atmosphere, gone, gone, mole Kelvin, and the Kelvin, the 298 Kelvin. Okay, the Kelvin's also gone. So this is going to be in moles. 2.045 moles of carbon dioxide, because remember, they said it was 50 liters of carbon dioxide I was working with, so it's still carbon dioxide. I have switched from volume to moles. So you see, this is what I did. I used the volume, I used the formula, and I got to moles. Now I need to switch substances, because the question is about the potassium superoxide. So I'll use the balanced chemical equation. I want to switch between carbon dioxide and the potassium superoxide. All right, there's a two, there's a four. 2.045 moles of carbon dioxide times from that balanced chemical equation. It says two moles of carbon dioxide it ends up using four moles of the potassium superoxide. All right, well, that's nice. I don't mind that. That's just saying multiply by two, right? 4.089, mind you, that's because I have this on my calculator and it rounded this way. Moles of potassium superoxide. Okay, I feel like I've gotten there. But wait, wait, one more thing. It said calculate the mass. So I just got through switching from moles of one substance to moles of another substance, and they want a mass. Oh, well, let me use the molar mass, and I will be done with this problem then. I need the molar mass of KO2. All right, so that's going to be one potassium. We'll look that up. 39.098, and two oxygens, so that's going to be 31. 998, add them together, and you end up with 71.096 grams per mole. I will multiply this by that, get rid of the moles, end up with grams. 4.089 moles times 71.096 grams per mole. 
couple of those cancel. My calculator spits out a big long number, but I realize I need to dial that back. I only have two sig figs. So it's 290. Don't put a decimal point here. And then it will be two sig figs. So two sig figs without decimal point. And it's going to be grams. Up, okay. Up, two. Okay, here's another one. Reaction of hydrogen and oxygen gases to produce liquid water. Again, used in space flight. What mass of water, okay, so they're asking for mass, is produced in the reaction of 100 liters of oxygen stored at? Oh, okay. So what are we back to? They're telling us something about that we have a certain number of liters. There is a particular balanced equation that goes with this. And we want to know what the mass is that's produced. So we're going to use this arc in this graphic again. Okay, let's see what we need to do then. We'll start with saying it's a 100 liters of oxygen. Okay, well that's fine, that's a volume. Okay, that's my volume, excellent. Now my temperature, well they said it was 25 degrees Celsius. Well, can't use Celsius. So we're back to doing this again. That's going to be 298 Kelvin again. Okay, so we got a volume, we got a temperature. They also told us the pressure. They said the pressure was one atmosphere. Oh good, that's already in the units I want. So I've got PV and T. I know what R is, 08206, because I need the liter atmosphere version. I hate to harp on that, but I need to because, you know, once you start using the other one, then it always ends up being confusing. From all this, I can figure out what N is. I just take PV plus NRT and rearrange it to isolate N. N equals PV over RT. I have all those, so let's figure it out. N will be one atmosphere, 100 liters, divided by the point of 8206. There's the liter atmospheres. Boom, they're gone. Here's the mole Kelvin. And the Kelvin is 298. Now the Kelvin's gone. The mole is below two division signs, so it pops up to the top. There's what N is. So I've dealt with jumping over to here. I'm not done. I need to use the balanced chemical equation. They said it was hydrogen gas and oxygen gas creating water. Well, there's a single O here and there's two there. So I guess I better put a two here. Okay, that'll take care of the oxygen. Here's four hydrogens. This is only two. Boom, there we go. There's our balanced chemical equation. And then I can be all good and put the gases in here and that this is liquid. This is the number of moles of what? Oh, this would be the number of moles of oxygen because that's what I put in for the volume was oxygen gas. So this is representing how many moles I have of O2. That is not what I was asked for. I wanted to know about the mass of water. So I need to switch this. This number that I just came up with, I need to keep going because this is moles of oxygen. And that doesn't answer the question, okay? I need to put in the stoichiometry. For every one mole of oxygen, I create two moles of water. Okay, so let's take this, which had some number associated with it, which I have not calculated, and add on to it. I'm making it into one big, long problem, simply because of the way I'm lining it up. 298 Kelvin goes in here and the Kelvin's gone. Remember, this part is moles of oxygen, but that's not what I was asked for in the problem. I was asked about water. So now the next term has to do with this. Two moles of water occur in the equation whenever one mole of oxygen is used in the equation. Okay, so once I multiply by this, the moles of oxygen is going to cancel out. Now I've got the actual water I was interested in, but they asked for mass. So I have to go figure out the molar mass of water, which when you get done with it, ends up being like this, grams per mole of H2O. So you see, now we'll 
we've canceled this, now we'll have canceled that, and we're going to have grams of water. We end up with the 147 grams of H2O.